really interesting is when we were first writing Record 8, or we'll become Record 8, um, Paula really stepped up in the lyric department, which was great for me. I really enjoyed that because I've always been like the lyric guy, the man. So it's really nice to have someone else kind of come up with the lyrics and I can read them and interpret them in my own direction. Um, the original idea that Paulo had for Record 8 was to call the album The Revanchist or Revanchist. And while he and I both saw really eye to eye on that idea, and at first I really liked it, then I started thinking, Revanchist is a very difficult word for you know, most people. I mean, anyone in France isn't going to have a problem because it's, it's the derivation is a French word. But in other countries, Revanchist is a strange word and you know, we've done the ascendancy thing, we've done Shogun, we've done things like that where it's a little bit complex, but uh, I was kind of, then I, I kind of went from being really into it to kind of being like, I don't know, maybe we should come up with something else. We talked, I talked about the idea of maybe self-title. Um, so we sort of put the idea of coming up with the title of the record on the back burner. We knew we wanted my wife Ash to do the art for the record. When she started doing the art for the record, we didn't give her any direction no ideas, but she just started coming up with this thing of making symbols for the different songs. Um, at the time, we had, I think this was when we had all the songs done, maybe when we had everything completely in. I saw the symbols, and I saw the symbol for the sin in the sentence, the triangle with the flames. And I was like, I said, that's the album cover right there. Like, as soon as I saw it, she's like, no, it's not the album cover. Like, what, what do you mean? Originally, we, we were thinking of her doing the packaging, but not necessarily the cover. But as soon as I saw that first image, I was like, no, that is the album cover. That's That's amazing. And I said, what song is that? She said, Sin and Sentence. And I brought it to the guys. And Sin as well as a song, lyrically and title-wise, was by Paulo. And I said, this is our title right here. And it all snapped into place, and we agreed right away that once we saw that image, we knew that it should be the title. Uh, this one's kind of self-explanatory. This one is another piece that you know, slightly motivational song with semi-struggling-ish uh, undertones in the verses. What's really interesting about this was I had the lyrics one specific way where I didn't really speak of a she. We didn't make the protagonist of the story a character. I think it was maybe an I. And this is what I love about my bandmates. Uh, Paulo, once again, for lyrics, had a really great idea. He's like, you know, Matt, we've addressed this subject. We, we, this was not South of the Snow. So I think lyrically, the verses was the similar, but it was an I. So it's kind of like Dead and Gone. Um, slightly different subject matter. But the, the verses felt like Dead and Gone. And Paulo said, why don't you do something like have she, have she be the, you know, the main character of the story versus an I or a me or a he give it to a she and I felt like that completely changed the entire song around and it made it far more interesting than it was just by changing the point of view of the story and the protagonist of the story that was very interesting um, what's cool about that song I think it's it a nice lift because the whole song is in B minor and then the chorus it jumps up two steps is it two steps jumps up yeah two steps jumps up so it really gives that lift which is something we've done here and there throughout the years. I think the first time we ever did it was... Actually, the first time we did it was on If I Could Collapse the Masses, so we've been doing it since record one. Those are British. Um, people ask a lot of times, do you ever come with lyrics or choruses before music? Generally, being a guitar player first, Come the music first, right? Focus on the top. But this chorus was one. Oh, excuse me. This chorus is one that came to me, I think, at an airport. I seem to remember flying to or from Australia. Maybe it was to Australia. And I came with that title. Uh, I don't remember what city we were in in Australia. No, I can't, I can't remember. Maybe it was Sydney. Maybe. Um, and I came with that chorus and I was telling the guys this one change. Uh, I don't know if I've talked about it much. That we did in pre pro that I wish we the original chorus of Throws of Perdition was Life Feels Quite Like Hell Should. And I really liked the quite. And um, I think it was actually our manager suggested it was a quite. He said quite made it feel not as strong. But I said quite is a word I need to use. So that's not like quite when it's uh, not late. Uh, but I feel like the song, the chorus would be stronger. It said Life Feels Quite Like Quite Like Hell Should. But this Hell Should. The players that throws are one of those 
stories. It's like a storyline kind of song that isn't derived from something. It's something where I made it up. The idea of me, um, me being the protagonist of the story, uh, facing off against the world, basically. So you can use this song as a metaphor. You can you can read it uh, literally or figuratively. It can be represented representational of the way you see your world. And the idea is you know, you're facing these, these terrible things. You're facing this quest. Um, and the idea what the chorus is saying is life feels like hell she probably feels but this hell is very cold and that's what that chorus means so cold pull another knife out stick it with the rest of the means the, the knives in my the knives in my back from this world I I guess I'm a pretty angry lyric writer aren't I but that's that's what balances me that's why I'm able to smile at you and like be entertaining and be funny because I get you get the demons out we were talking about that earlier on the last stream but getting the demons out into your music and it helps you be a little more adjusted. It requires a lot for me to be a, a well-adjusted, functioning member of society. That's being in a metal band where I can put my feelings into music and lyrics. Also, jiu-jitsu and yoga and kettlebells and entertaining people and making things and working at side stuff like Ritu and the Dimes thing and just staying very busy. Uh, I find that, you know, I, I definitely am a person who has a lot of anxiety, but I feel like my anxiety is actually... The fire of it is put out with the more stuff I have to do, which seems kind of counterintuitive, but that's the way it works for me. Alright, so Shogun's lyrics. Uh, Shogun is a song that, just like a lot of the tracks off this record, um, I made like a story, like kind of the, imagine the idea of like a graphic novel, but an audio novel. I made a story, and I was hoping that everyone pictured this story. The lyrics are pretty, pretty to the point of what I want you to see, but I want you to picture that world in your head when you're listening to the lyrics, listening to the music, um, and just have fun with it. This, this song's meant to be kind of like a journey. Same with Kitty Stiegelman. To the mouth of Helen Marx throws a British. And those are all like, there's stories, there's some representation there. You can take what you want out of it. Um, you can apply to what you want to be applied to for things in your life or in life in general. But this song, I want you to, you can picture the Shogun going on this battle. You can picture that. There's nothing, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. So it could be literal or it could be figurative. Alliteration works at the end of the word as well. 
yeah, I, I like to make words sound fun as titles alone. I want people to be able to look at a title and go, wow, I want to listen to that song. Whereas, I mean, if the title's just like Dirt Bag, it's like, that's not exciting. What's up, we're trivia, this is Dirt Ball. Like, that, that doesn't sound cool. But yeah, so the idea of like Life of the Flies, it's people's attraction to tragedy. And it's not, it's not saying that they're, they're evil or good for it. It's just this like natural inclination to want to look at something bad. Not to see something bad, but just, it's like we're drawn to it. And that's the concept of like Life of the Flies. Uh, the idea of those who run will be burned. Those who try to run from the truth and try to run from that fact will be burned because they'll recognize that the same thing happens.